While Autobots and Decepticons are powerful Transformers who fight each other, they can even combine various entities to form huge creatures known as the Combiners. The Combiners were a well-known phenomenon in the Transformers franchise, and they could be constructed out of vehicles, weapons, or various Cybertronians. They usually appeared as giant robots and were virtually undefeatable due to the combined powers of multiple entities that made them. Today, we will explore everything about the Combiners and their appearances across the Transformers, and tell you what there is to know about them. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. So thank you, and let's begin. Vibration to disengage. What are combiners and how did it all begin? The concept of combiners was borrowed from a pre-existing anime trope wherein various robots were combined. It was first seen in 1982 when Dio Clone Toyline introduced figurines made up of separate robots that came together to serve as vehicles or robots. In 1985, the Transformers franchise was gaining quite a lot of popularity when a company named Hasbro started selling toys known as Constructicons that would unite to form the Death Devastator. After the decline of the Diaclone toy line, the Transformers toys gained a lot of popularity, and there was a mass production of the toys such as the Stunticons, Protectobots, and Aerial Bots that were built with a combination of toys. These figures were created by mixing and matching various robots in the toy set, leading Takara Marketing to label them as Scramble City as they could be created by scrambling the robots in different combinations, and they were also introduced in fictional storylines. While it was earlier stated that they first combined during the Great War, a Transformers miniseries later revealed that the Combiners existed on Cybertron even before they traveled to Earth. Around the time the original Transformers story arc ended, the Combiners had expanded beyond just the Scramble City characters. They now even included numerous other Combiners such as Squawk Box, Skylynx, Duocon, and others. The concept of combiners was especially popular among the Japanese, and the toy lines kept introducing more and more combiners, such as Beast Force, Multiforce, and so on. Combiners were not that popular in the Beast Wars and Beast Machine story arc, but the original Japanese shows made it a point to include them in all the storylines. Various characters such as Landfill and Rail Racer were also introduced, and the central idea behind these character creations was that the Autobots can combine with any other Autobot to create a combiner. The series soon introduced Optimus Prime's spark of combination, which is essentially a supernatural force that allows any Transformer to merge with another. For a long time, the combiners were also known as Gestalts, a scientific term that states that any object is greater than the sum of its total parts. It implied that the combiners were much more powerful than the individual Cybertronians, and this term soon became popular even among the character designers at Hasbro. IDW Comics' first design of the Transformers essentially decided to explain the Gestalt's technology as a highly experimental design, as they even used this to describe why some Autobots could not combine powers. One of the authors named Simon Furman even labeled Monstructor as a failed design from Cybertron's Golden Age and Combiners gained attention after the creator of Devastator. Over the next few years, various publications released different Combiners or even components of the Combiners as a part of their official collector's club. Fun Publication released the Combiners components of the combiners known as Energon, and they later even announced that these components would eventually come together to form the fragments of the entity known as Nexus Prime. Nexus Prime gained a lot of popularity as a combiner and was even introduced as the first combiner by Astro Publications. Various Japanese companies also started introducing more and more combiners in their toy line, and the Combiners War soon helped these characters regain popularity. Along with the release of the Combiners War series, IDW also released a supplementary comic series set in the same universe. This storyline stated that Nexus Prime's Enigma of Combination was essentially a supernatural artifact and it helped to merge the Cybertronians to form the Combiners. In the modern day, Combiners technology is believed to be supernatural rather than scientific and there's a lot of focus on the Enigma of Combination. Modern depictions of the Combiners also focus more on their internal struggles and individual efforts to coordinate and share their best features to work together.
What are the different types of combiners? While there are a lot of various combiners across the Transformers universe, they can usually be combined into three categories that include robot mode combiners, vehicle mode combiners, and other combiners. These combiners were a combination of the Autobots or the Decepticons who often fought against each other and tried to overpower the other faction. Robot mode combiners were seen in large numbers in the Transformers. They were created by the merging various Cybertronians into one huge super robot with the strength of each member who formed it. The combiner then gained its own unique name and personality that was a combination of the best traits of all the Cybertronians that created it. Sometimes the personality of the strongest member of the Combiner would overshadow the others, and then the Combiner just became an extension of their personality, which was also supported by the rest of the Cybertronians that had come together to form the Combiner. A Combiner can be created with as few as two robots, or even up to a hundred robots, but the most well-known Combiners are the ones that merge five robots in the original comic series and cartoons. Some popular robot Combiners are Defensor, Bruticus, Abominus, which were all inspired by a five-member design wherein the team leader formed the Combiner's head while the four members formed its limbs. These are also known as Scrambler City Combiners, but some MicroMaster Combiners also enable the members to interchangeably switch the positions of the limbs they formed. The Vehicle Mode Combiners were typically created by merging various Transformers into a vehicle. Unlike the Robot Mode Combiners, they did not merge the personalities of the members who formed them. Instead, they only worked together physically to facilitate transport. While a few Transformers could combine to become a vehicle, most could not do so on their own, and they became a functional part of a combiner. In this form, they transformed into the front or back half of the vehicle and worked along the other parts of the combiner to form a functional vehicle. A few combiners also did not function entirely as a robot or a vehicle and were mostly part of the Minicon teams. The Minicons are usually combined to form a weapon or a piece of equipment to help the other Transformers. Exploring the show Transformers, Combiner Wars that deal with the subject. The Combiners were also a part of the Transformers Combiner Wars that was released in 2016, and it was created by Machinina Incorporated and Hasbro's AllSpark Animation. The show was animated by Tatsunoko Production and had a total of eight short episodes that were six to seven minutes each. The events of Combiner Wars took place four years after the Great War between the Autobots and Decepticons, and things were relatively peaceful even on Cybertron. However, However, the rise of the Combiners brings a lot of unrest to the planet's peace, which soon gives way to a full-blown Combiners war. In the meantime, Cybertron had also created a new ruling council in the absence of Optimus Prime and Megatron, and the council consisted of Rodimus Prime, Mistress of Flame, and Starscream. Romanus Prime was an Autobot member of the council, while Starscream used to work under Decepticon's leader, Megatron, before joining the council. The Mistress of Flame used to rule the planet Caminus before becoming part of the ruling council. The council also possessed the enigma of combination that could create new combiners, and they also had intentions to use it for their gain. The show was set in a period when the combiner war had caused huge-scale damage to the planet of Caminus, which was also the home planet of the Transformer known as Windblade. Windblade was tired of the wars between the Transformers, and she'd set out to end the war before her entire world perished. The first episode was titled The Fall, and it began with a duel between Autobot Combiner, Computron, and the Decepticon. Decepticon combiner Menasaur. The two start fighting on a space bridge over the planet of Caminus, and Menasaur eventually manages to defeat Computron and allegedly even kills him. After his apparent demise, Windblade and Maxima show up at the scene and go after Menasaur and even manage to defeat him. The fight results in Maxima's death, and Menasaur then blames Windblade for it and calls her a killer. Menasaur tells Windblade that the Council has gotten its hands on the Enigma of Combination. The Council even intends to create an army of combiners with the Enigma, and Windblade finally decides to head back to Cybertron. As the episode ends, she leaves Computron's body behind while leaving. But we do see that the lights are still flickering within his body. In the next episode titled The Council, we finally meet Starscream, Rodimus Prime, and the Mistress of Flame as they discuss Menasaur and Computron's death. The Council even discusses their plan to create more Combiners and then send them to destroy all the old ones. But Starscream opposes his plan and comments on how the Enigma works in mysterious ways. In the meantime, Windblade spies on the Council from afar, and she even aims Maxima's rifle at the Enigma with the intention of destroying it. However, her plans are soon thwarted by Optimus Prime, who mistakenly believes 
believes that Windblade is trying to assassinate Starscream. In the next episode, Windblade attacks Optimus out of anger, but she struggles to fight the seasoned Autobot. After Optimus easily deflects her attacks, he advises her to return to the planet of Caminus and help her people. Windblade then tells him that she was only here to destroy the Enigma of Combination, and Optimus grimly states that it would be almost impossible to do so. However, he then comes up with a plan and states that he knows someone who can help them. In the next episode titled Unforgotten, Windblade and Optimus travel together to find Megatron, and they soon locate him fighting a bunch of Constructicons on an unknown planet. While Megatron initially refuses to hear them out, he agrees to help them after learning that Starscream has the Enigma of Combination. The three of them head on a journey together to meet the Council while the Constructicons spy on them and overhear their plan. Finally, the next episode begins with the Council locating the bodies of Menasaur and Computron while Optimus Prime and the others head to the Council's chambers. They intend to get their hands on the Enigma while Megatron and Windblade express their desire to kill the Council members. However, Optimus rejects this idea while the Council also learns about their presence and tries to figure a way out of it. The Mistress of Flame suggests that they should threaten Optimus with the Enigma to scare them away, while the two groups finally come face to face with each other. They get into an argument and Megatron blasts at Starscream and violently attacks him. Optimus, Windblade, and Megatron also face the Council's automated defenses, while the extremely powerful combiner known as the Devastator shows up and immediately attacks Rodimus Prime. Devastator was made by combining the various Constructicons and was quite an infamous villain who had been showing up in multiple media and comic series. As the episode ends, Devastator lunges at Rodimus and rips off his arms while laughing aloud at the situation. In the next episode, titled A War of Giants, Optimus Prime and the others face Devastator and try to defeat him while he steals the Enigma of Combination for himself. Megatron even orders Devastator to concede since he used to work for him formerly, but Devastator refuses to step down. In the meantime, a female Autobot combiner named Victorian shows up at the scene and demands that they hand her the Enigma. She ends up fighting with Devastator while the Council tries to unlock the Enigma and activate it. Starscream activates the Enigma, allowing him to enforce his plan of enslaving the Combiners. Starscream then uses the Enigma first to gain control over Minasaur and Computron's bodies and take control over Victorion and the Devastator as well. He then merges all of these Combiners with his body and takes the form of the Ultimate Combiner. In the next episode, Starscream celebrates his newly formed body, but he struggles to deal with with such a gigantic force and starts turning into a shapeless mass with various components of the other members floating around his body. Enigma's power drives him insane and he even starts attacking others while Rodimus Prime and Mistress of Flame try to escape. Meanwhile, Megatron tries to escape the scene while Windblade bravely tries to attack Starscream. She soon gets up amid Starscream's powerful attack and falls unconscious while Starscream approaches to kill her. In the final episode of the Combiner Wars, Windblade hallucinates a conversation between her and Megatron Metroplex as she tries to remember her role as her city's speaker and how she needs to defend her people. She even recalls that her roots are linked to an ancient titan, and then she summons this titan to defeat Starscream. The Titan grasps Starscream in his arm while Optimus Prime and Megatron unite to find a way to get rid of him forever. Megatron turns himself into a giant cannon and Optimus then hurls his cannon at Starscream while they also realize that Windblade has somehow survived all of Starscream's attacks. In a shocking turn of events, Megatron then offers the Enigma of Combination to Windblade and states that they should never disturb him again. As the series ends, Windblade hands the Enigma to Victorion and tells her that the Enigma should only belong to the Combiners, and not with the Council or anyone else. Victorion, Devastator, and the revived Computron and Menasaur soon leave the scene. After they leave, Windblade warns the others that though the Combiner War has ended, they have a new threat in the form of the return of the Titans. Computron, merge! <laughs> I am Computron. So the strongest Autobot and Decepticon combiners. Computron was one of the strongest Autobot combiners and essentially one of the most intelligent Transformers of all time. In the G1 continuity, Computron was gifted all of his intelligence by Grimlock, who had somehow received an upgrade that made him a knowledgeable being. Grimlock then donated some of his intelligence to Computron, which was the combined form of Lightspeed, Afterburner, Strafe, Nose Cone, and Scattershot. Computron's computational matrix had almost infinite capacity, which helped him analyze the situation and come up with intelligent solutions. Sometimes his thinking hindered him from actually taking action and thereby causing damage, but he remained one of the most powerful Autobot combiners 
ever. Omega Supreme was another Autobot combiner and he was inspired by Devastator's design. However, the Autobot Grapple could not wholly replicate Devastator's design, so Omega Supreme only had three instead of six components. He gained life by using Optimus Prime's creation matrix and he was supposed to be one of the leading defenders of the Autobots. He was quite adept at defending his people and he had once even destroyed most of the Decepticons that tried to destroy the Ark in the comics. The Autobots had created the aerial bots to help them in the air and the field and the combiner known as Superion was the Autobots very first combiner combatant who could help them in their battles. He was created by combining Air Raid, Silverbolt, Firefight, Sky Drove, and Slingshot and he was quite a frightening warrior who could defeat many Decepticons at once. He often channeled his strength towards defeating his enemies to silence the five personalities within his being and he was one of the strongest Autobot combiners. Menasaur was one of the most well-known Decepticon combiners and he was created out of the Stunticons known as Dead End, Wild Rider, Drag Strip, and breakdown. These four members often ended up in conflict with their team leader, Motormaster, and this conflict often disrupted Menasaur's functioning and made him weak. While Menasaur was not the wisest of all, he certainly had a lot of strength and power and was virtually undefeatable in any battle. Bruticus was one of the Decepticon combiners who were primarily known for their strength and not so much for their strategy or war tactics, and he was composed of five other Combaticons. The Combaticons were a subsection of the Decepticons, and Bruticus consisted of Onslaught, Brawl, Vortex, Swindle, and Blastoff, who were all expert military strategists. However, Bruticus did not share the strength and was even known for losing his temper very easily. In the G1 cartoon continuity, Bruticus was created as a weapon by Starscream who wanted to use this combiner against Megatron. After Optimus Prime died in the Transformers movie, the franchise released a line of pretender Transformers who had human or animal looking shells with a transformable robot body within it. While the Pretender Autobots usually had a human shell, the Pretender Decepticons had an animal shell, and Monstructor was formed by combining six such Pretender Decepticons. These included Birdbrain, Slog, Scowl, Wildfly, Ice Pick, and Bristleback. And they all merged to form a robot with the ability to corrode any metal. The Comic Book Story Arc of the Combiners The Combiners first appeared in Marvel in the Transformers comics in their Generation 1, followed by the Marvel Generation 2 comics, Classics, Generation 1, Timelines, and the Transformers 84 comic series. They also had a dedicated Japanese Generation 1 cartoon continuity and were even part of the TV magazine comics, Wings Universe, and so on. After a while, Combiners appeared in the Transformers G.I. Joe comic series as well as the Hearts of Steel series. Their most notable appearance was seen in the 2005 IDW continuity, wherein the Ammonite species could easily combine mechanical species with one another. Transformers later gained the capacity to encode combinations in their CNA, which would help them combine with others, but this ability was only possessed by a few of them. Optimus Prime used this enigma of combination to kickstart the history of combiner technology among Cybertronians, and this enigma was created by Solus Prime ages ago. The Enigma allowed the Cybertronians to merge or even reconfigure two or more of them to create a combiner that could coordinate their actions. During the first Cybertronian Civil War, Nexus Prime and Onyx Prime enabled various Autobots to combine and form an army of Headmasters to help them fight the war. The Headmasters were a combination of beasts and bots. Some Cybertronians even protested the use of such advanced technology. One of the warriors named Galvatron was fiercely against the idea of combiners and he single-handedly defeated all the headmasters before finally murdering Nexus Prime and stealing the Enigma. Nova Prime then led Cybertron in the times after the war and they ushered in a new golden age. However, he soon got distracted by the idea of combiners, and he even asked his chief scientist, G-Axis, to create a combiner without the Enigma. Even though G-Axis tried his best, he could not replicate a combiner without an Enigma, and the result creation then had a violent personality. He created a Monstructor, who went on a rampage around Crystal City until the Autobot combiner named Omega Supreme locked him in a dimensional prison. Some other Cybertronians also discovered new ways to create 
create combinations, such as alternate models or a branch spark that allowed them to link to a twin sibling, and a bunch of Transformers colonists on the planet of Division soon evolved themselves into duo combiners. While combiner technology started gaining popularity after the Great War, Megatron also jumped on the bandwagon and recruited g axis student Shockwave to research and create combiners. However, this Comic-Con project did not go well after one of the members who were supposed to be part of the combiner left to join the Autobots. Meanwhile, Monstructor managed to free himself from the dimensional prison and the Autobots soon captured him and even disintegrated him into his components so that they could study these parts in greater detail. Jetfire and Technobot especially studied these parts with the hopes that they could help them recover to their original state, but they could not get a chance to do so before the Decepticons got their hands on these components. Meanwhile, Megatron's new recruit, Shockwave, got bored and decided to leave the Decepticons. Bombshell then stepped in and somehow managed to create the first successful combiner known as Devastator. Devastator was created by combining the Constructicons, who could then merge to form Devastator any time that they wanted, even without the help of their engineer Scrapper. Over the years, various Cybertronians such as the Predacons and Stunticons tried to rebuild themselves or merge with others using black market technology. Still, most of their attempts were unsuccessful as they could not agree or combine over anything. Finally, the last battle of the Great War saw the entity known as Devoid harness a mysterious energy form that could control the will of any Decepticons, Galvatron, and many others. He then used this energy to take control of these bots and combine them into a monstrous avatar that would do his bidding. However, Devoid could not mind control Megatron, who eventually learned to manipulate this same energy in order to retaliate. Megatron even used this energy against the aerial bots and drove them to become more aggressive and even fight each other when they went on a mission in the Cybertronian wilderness. The aerial bots had their defense mechanisms in place and they combined to create Superion to defend themselves. Meanwhile, Bombshell prepared himself for Megatron's return, brainwashed Prowl, and even rebuilt the Constructicons. He eventually managed to create a technology to combine Megatron with the Constructicons and he even experimented on Prowl to create a new Devastator. After Bombshell died, this new Devastator went into a frenzy and even tried to attack Superion. The Constructicons then started seeing Prowl's Devastator as their enemy, and they even teamed up with the Autobots to form another Devastator. Meanwhile, Prowl struggled to be part of the Combiner after the various Constructicons that had merged with him bonded within his body. He also started having strange side effects such as nosebleeds, and he finally admitted that he was one of the Decepticons now, even though he believed them to be enemies earlier. At this point, there was a lot of chaos on Cybertron as various groups tried to gain control over the planet, and their current ruler, Starscream, then ordered his forces to repair Superion. One of Starscream's followers, Scoop, scoured the Earth to locate the Enigma of Combination and then used it to revive Superion. Superion then returned to his regular functioning self and combined two new components named Alpha Bravo and Power Glide. Superion's return marked the beginning of the new Combiner's War, orchestrated by Starscream as a part of his elaborate plan to conquer the planet of Kaminus. Starscream wished to conquer all of the Cybertronian colonies in the world and various combiners such as Superion, Defensor, Menasaur, and others who took part in the Combiner's War. Meanwhile, Prowl gained a sense of what was going on and he approached Optimus Prime with the idea that he should combine with others to form Optimus Maximus to fight against Starscream's forces. These Autobots then came together to defeat Starscream's new Devastator, which was made of Constructicons merged with Starscream's follower, Scoop. After defeating the Devastator, they formed a new Council of Worlds to restore peace, but things went awry when RC tried to steal the Enigma from them and even accidentally created the Autobot Combiner known as Victorion. Starscream also continued his endeavors to capture other planets and he approached the people of Devision with an offer to give them a seat on his council only if they gave him access to their advanced Combiner technology. The Combiners created during this age showed superior skills and abilities and Victorion could even hold a proper conversation and display critical thinking skills among other things. Combiners such as Defensor and Superion started refusing to split into their component members after a while and they insisted on working as Combiner without ever separating away into their respective components. As this story arc approached its end, Optimus Prime was away on Cybertron when the Autobots on Earth discovered that Garrison Blackrock had managed to combine his Seeker clone into huge three-part Combiners. Optimus then returned to Earth with Superion and Victorion to look into the matter and he learned that Garrison 
black rocks tinkering with the enigma had caused its energies to infect the entire planet of Earth. This caused the whole world to turn into a huge enigma, and Galvatron later went against his own rules to create two combiners, Galvatronus and Skyrain. To undo the Earth enigma, Superion absorbed the enigma's code into his mind, intending to kill himself to get rid of this code forever. These events were followed by chaos across the Transformers universe as everyone tried to use the combiner's technology for their benefit. Some Combaticons even tried to steal the Enigma and create Bruticus to access the mind of one of their former teammates. They ended up creating a monster due to their inexperience with technology, and they even combined to form Bruticus and unleash a monster. On Earth, a human dictator tried to use this technology to turn the Predacons into a huge combiner known as Predic King. Later, Onyx Prime invaded Cybertron, and Victorion ended up in a clash with Devastator, which resulted in the destruction of the latter. When Unicron later invaded Cybertron, the entity known as Monstruct made his return and even severely injured Victorion during the clash. This battle moved to Earth from Cybertron, wherein the aerial bots recombined to form Superion and then worked alongside Victorion to finally defeat Monstructor once and for all. They later appeared in the 2006 IDW Beast Wars continuity, wherein Tarantulas created combiner known as Predicus, which was formed of the members of Tripredicus Council. The Autobots then created Magnaboss in retaliation, and this combiner was was formed by merging various Autobots veterans. Predicus and Magnaboss faced each other in the final battle before the Great War, where Magnaboss defeated the bot, who later became Megatron. As the story moved forward, the Great Upgrade caused people to forget about the technology, and Magnaboss disappeared from the view. They later appeared in Beast Wars, Uprising, in the Timelines comic series. The Combiners also appeared in the Prime Wars trilogy cartoon, as well as the Of Masters and Mayhem comics published in 2016. They later even appeared in a Transformers Ghostbusters series, as well as a Magaziner Z vs. Transformers series. The Combiners later appeared in the IDW in 2019, wherein we explored the story of a bunch of former Cybertronians who had tried to use the Enigma to become a Combiner. However, their attempt failed, and they turned into an abomination due to their unclear ideas about murder merging together, and then they went to spend years rampaging across the planet to find fuel. The Enigma of Combination was then buried underneath the surface until the Constructicons discovered it while cleaning up the place after the War of the Threefold Spark. They then learned how to turn themselves into Combiner by embracing its emergent personality, and they learned to use its inherent feelings of anger in order to gain more strength. Meanwhile, Wheeljack was worried about their future if the Constructicons went into a frenzy and a approached Nominus Prime to exile them to Malax. Nominus agreed to do so, and he even stated that the Combiner should not exist, as they would ruin his plan for Cybertron's future. He then approached Turgamac and entrusted her with the Enigma, unaware that she had encouraged the Constructicons to merge in the first place. In the next few years, various Combiners started showing up in vehicles or weapons. One scientist named Arachnid even used her knowledge to create a combination core that could force merge any bots together to form a combiner. These events finally led to another war, while the Constructicons combined together to form Devastator, and the Autobots such as Scattershot and his team combined to form Computron after falling prey to Arachnid's combination core. Their story ended with a showdown between Computron and Devastator, wherein Computron defeated his opponent. However, he could not survive all the attacks fired at him, and was forced to decombine into components as this comic arc ended. What makes the Combiners so unique? The Combiners essentially assembled and combined various Cybertronians into a single composite body, and they had their own unique personalities. There was no fixed formula to create a Combiner, and their varied strengths, weapons, and vehicles made each of them stand out. They were also larger and more powerful than a usual Transformer, and no regular Autobot or Decepticon could ever imagine defeating a Combiner on its own. Conclusion. To sum it up, the Combiners were quite an interesting creation and had unimaginable strength and power to destroy just about anyone. They have also appeared across various Transformers media and comics, and we hope to see them more in the future. And if you liked this content, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. And in the meantime, have a good one and be safe. Thank you, everybody.